Pay close attention. What you're about to see is Bible prophecy being fulfilled. Welcome to another edition of YPN News, bringing you news as it relates to Bible prophecy and foretold by Israel Hawkins. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about a problem with a huge seaweed bloom, toxic seaweed that is taking place right now on the East Coast. Also, um, banks too big to fail. Well, you know, a few in California Starting found out, and that's right, uh, that that is not the case. And we're also going to talk about Russia and China's continued growing relationship that is, uh, as they get stronger, well, I think the United States is getting a lot more worried. But first, those seaweed blooms called sargassum uh, is infecting coasts from Cancun to the U.S., hampering time spent at beach by people on vacation and creating a toxic nightmare for environmentalists responsible for cleaning up the growing blooms of toxic seaweed. Well, Take a look at this next video for more on this growing threat. The pristine beaches and crystal clear waters of the Caribbean may be unrivaled the world over. Nearly 4 million people a year travel from the U.S. to Cancun for vacation each year. Another 2 million from other countries, including Europe and Canada. But all of that is now under threat from the newest manifestation of a changing planet, seaweed. It is the biggest algae bloom in the world. Massive waves of seaweed called sargassum washing up on shore day after day. This beach was just cleaned today. Yes, a couple of hours and the seaweed will be on the beach again. Jose Escalante has owned a small hotel in Tulum, Mexico for eight years. Every day, workers here and up and down the Yucatan Peninsula remove tons and tons of decomposing sargassum from beaches. Every night, it comes back. Rosa Rodriguez Martinez from Mexico's National University is trying to figure out why. We are getting sargassum almost from March to October. So basically more than half of the year we receive massive amounts. Whereas before it was how long? Before maybe two or three weeks during the summer. That's a huge difference. Yes, it's impressive. Uh, impressive is one word for it. A, a problem, big problem is another. It's a problem, a economical problem, ecological, and probably human health problem also. Since 2011, the amount of sargassum in the Atlantic has increased dramatically. It currently forms a 5,000 mile mass from Africa to the Caribbean. It is estimated to weigh 22 million tons. Why is it so bad right now? I think it's because we have polluted the sea too much. So now we have a lot of nutrients and the algae are taking advantage of it. Fertilizer runoff from Brazil increased by deforestation is believed to be the largest fuel source for the sargassum. That, combined with warming ocean water and changing ocean currents, has put the Yucatan squarely in the crosshairs. It has gotten so bad the Mexican Navy has just been put in charge of dealing with this problem. They took us up on a reconnaissance mission to locate the largest sargassum waves. We're fully aware that we're only addressing the effects of sargassum. Rear Admiral Enrique Flores Morado told us the Navy will build new sargassum-busting ships to reel in as much as they can. But that does not solve any problem. In reality, the causes have to be addressed. But given the lack of research, we're now implementing immediate actions. In reality, the causes have to be addressed. But given the lack of research, we're now implementing immediate actions. Right now, many towns and resort owners are using floating barriers to corral and collect sargassum, including in Puerto Morelos, half an hour south of Cancun. We can say for sure that we are the first destination in the whole Mexican Caribbean with already a control above the sargassum. There's a lot of it though. Yeah, yeah, because this area we are it doesn't look controlled. No, no, no. Hector Tamayo is in charge of tourism here. How many trucks go in and out each day? 
more than 50. More than 50 trucks, yeah. just of sargassum every yeah. day, carted in and out yeah. of here. And then we just start mixing that with the sargasso. Some are developing novel ways to use sargassum, including Omar Vasquez, who's building homes with it. They're better than the other bricks. The sargassum is mixed with clay and compost by foot and then compressed into bricks. I mean, it's ironic because I grew up without a house, without a home. Uh, we crossed the border to the States when I was eight years old. And then came back. I came back to live my Mexican dream. Your Mexican dream. Yes. It does have not even a gram of cement. Everything is organic. Even though Vasquez says his homes are 100% organic, there may be an issue with what accumulates in the sargassum at sea. We took it fresh. Rosa Rodriguez's latest research shows sargassum is high in heavy metals, like lead and arsenic. And disposal is a major issue. This is one of the places we found where the sargassum is taken. It's a dump site miles into the jungle, far away from the ocean. It's unclear if the sargassum left here seeps into the ground, goes up into the air, or just sits here forever. Sargassum is either being dumped inland or buried under the beach, which is illegal. It is a crisis stretching across the Caribbean with no end in sight. For folks watching this who may not be familiar with this problem or what's happening here, what do you say? It's something that is happening to the world, not, not just to the region. This is just a consequence of the entire planet being, you know, in, in trouble. Katana, it's amazing the volume of sargassum yeah. that they have to deal with. Truck you know, loads. it used to be a little bit, and now just, I mean, it just keeps coming, as yeah, she was talking said, about. 50 trucks a year, that guy said he was, um, a day that he was removing from the beaches, and it just keeps coming. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Well, forever chemicals are in the news again. Now, the EPA is proposing a bill that will ban six PFAS chemicals from drinking water, costing water treatment plants billions to do so while leaving many other chemicals unregulated. Annie Snyder with Politico in an interview with PBS NewsHour spoke on the topic and how it's not only drinking water, but many other common everyday items that are presently in use. Hmm. She said that PFAS have been in use since the 1940s and have a very strong chemical bond, which makes them extremely useful for commercial purposes such as nonstick cookware, camping gear, stain-resistant carpeting, military firefighting foam, and she said the list goes on. It's a lot more products than you think. Oh, for sure. Well, she continued by saying, because of their very strong bond, it makes them very difficult to break down in the environment. Because they don't break down, they accumulate in the environment, the rivers and streams, and also in our blood. Hmm. While the EPA is moving to regulate six of the PFAS, there are actually over 12,000 in that class of chemicals, many of which the effects on human health are not known about. But the first ones that have been studied are linked to cancer, uh, cancers, birth defects, and immune defects, uh, even at low levels, uh, that can make vaccines less effective. Well, the EPA's regulation would require facilities to monitor for these chemicals and to treat them so that they are below detectable limits. Now, the technology to remove these chemicals already exists, but they're not cheap to operate and maintain on a regular basis. So. The question might be, who will be fitting or footing the bill for cleaning these chemicals out of the drinking water? Well, if you said the company is responsible for putting them in the environment, well, you'd be wrong. The burden of payment will fall on the customers of water utility companies as new charges show up on their monthly water utility bills. That's usually where the cost gets passed on to as a consumer. That's right. Well, we're now going to turn to our field correspondent, Larry McGee, who's been working on a story for us. As uh, Katan, you mentioned in the beginning, a couple banks, very large banks, mm -hmm. suddenly mm -hmm. collapsed. Now, Larry, has, he's been looking at the story and has the details. Larry, what brought down these too big to fail banks? Financial problems also a part of the tumult working to produce the disintegration of the current world system. The banking industry in particular is in the midst of another crisis, with three banks having approached near collapse so far. 
as opposed to the government directly lending a lifeline to rescue banking giants as it has done in the past. This time around, federal authorities are intervening with advice and guidance with the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen leading several lending institutions to put together a $30 billion loan package to bail out First Republic Bank in the latest crisis. Ms. Yellen also appeared before the Senate to offer reassurances regarding the fitness of the nation's banking system and to reassure Americans that their money is safe. There are accusations coming from both sides of the aisle concerning culpability regarding it all, and the ripple effect of the instability is said now to also be producing uncertainty on Wall Street. For IPN News, I'm Larry McGee. Don Jeff, back to you. Well, wow, that's uh, reminiscent of what we saw just several years ago when the government had to actually bail out uh, many large corporations, including the uh, automotive industry, uh, because they were suffering big time. Uh, people are wondering if this is going to be the same with these banks, and they're worried because their assets are there, assets that they were counting on the bank keeping safe. Right. Failing banks is going to worry a lot of people. Big ripple effect. Well, the International Criminal Court took its first step this week towards accusing Russia of war crimes when arrest warrants for President Vladimir Putin and, Pres and the Russian President Commissioner for Children's Rights, Maria Lalova Belova, were issued. Now, the charges alleged deportation of Ukrainian children into Russia. Mm. In an interview at The Hague uh, with Chief Prosecutor Karim Khan, a CNN reporter asked how he decided to bring these charges to the forefront with so many atrocities to choose from. Well, Mr. Khan answered, quote, when I was outside St. Andrew's Church in uh, Buka about a year ago, I stated that Ukraine is a crime scene and there's many terrible allegations that have been received and we're analyzing them and reviewing them, end quote. Well, he continued, but before my election as prosecutor, before I started in June of 2021, I also I identified the crimes against or affecting children are under investigated and underreported. And this is why when you look at the factual matrix and actual evidence that we received, it was only right and appropriate to focus on the most vulnerable parts of society, and that's the children, he said. Interesting. Well, next week, uh, a meeting of two of the most powerful countries in the world has been scheduled. Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet for the first time since Russia's invasion in Ukraine in 2022. China's foreign ministry said, quote, the proposition boils down to one sentence, which is to urge peace and promote talks, end quote. Well, she and his government are trying to be seen as a peace broker between Russia and Ukraine. Now, recently publishing a paper on the 24th of the second month in 2023 called China's position on the political settlement of the Ukraine crisis. Now, within the paper, Beijing calls for, quote, resuming peace talks, unquote. Now, the Asian country is also portraying Pres President Xi as a global statesman who has just helped Iran and Saudi Arabia to broker a historic deal, restoring ties the two, to, to the two Middle Eastern countries that have not been seen in many years. However, there are some in the Western world who are skeptical for, of the new mediator role the Chinese government is assuming. At Putin's visit to China for the uh, 2022 Winter Olympics opening ceremony, Xi and Putin declared a no-limits partnership. Well, the two countries have also strengthened their ties economically and militarily through increased trading and joint military exercises. Well, there are new concerns that China could be planning to provide Russia with lethal military aid. However, Beijing has denied any such accusation. Now, in a meeting last month, President Putin told a Chinese diplomat that relations between their countries are reaching new milestones. They have a shared vision of a new world order no longer dominated by the West. Even though the two presidents have spoken to each other numerous times since Ukraine was invaded, Xi has not made one phone call to President Vladimir Zelensky. Uh, Ukraine's presidential advisor says negotiations for the Ukraine-Chinese phone call are ongoing. So as President Xi heads to Russia, the ability of China to help resolve the conflict is truly in the balance. 
Gatan, that's going to be a pretty big meeting because if you look at uh, what President Xi, you know, China, the government there, did with uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran, and they mm -hmm. actually uh, got some type of peace agreement there between these two countries, mm -hmm. and now they've been friends with President Vladimir Putin for so long, mm -hmm. uh, has, as we reported, didn't make any phone calls to the Ukrainian president, what's going to be the outcome? Are they going to try to broker a peace deal? Uh, between those two countries, Ukraine and Russia, or is President Xi going to side with Putin? Right. And if that is the case, which, you know, the United States perpetuates that, you know, Russia and China are in cahoots together to kind of push the West out of the picture, you know, I would suspect that that would increase tensions between the West, including NATO, China, and Russia. Right. Well, regardless of how it's going to turn out, the United States is definitely seeing if those two countries get together, Russia and China, two huge superpowers, yeah, you know, that uh, have a lot more than just military mm -hmm. now in common. Well, if you'd like to find out more about these stories, contact the House of Yahweh. When you do, don't forget to request your free copy of the Prophetic Word magazine and monthly newsletter. Here's how. To contact the House of Yahweh, you can write them at the House of Yahweh, P.O. Box 2498, Abilene, Texas 79604. You can call them at 1-800-613-9494. Visit them by going to any of their websites at Yahweh.com, YeshuaHawkins.com, or Yahweh'sBranch.com. You can also visit our website by going to YPNews.com. You can email the House of Yahweh at info at Yahweh.com. And for all calls outside the United States, please dial the number on your screen. And don't forget the best uh, age to study in the scriptures, with your scriptures, the Israel Says and Ask Israel program. You can find the Ask Israel program by going to askisrael.com and stay tuned to the Israel Says program uh, because it is being updated for increased learning experience. And when that's ready to go, you can keep checking back by going to israelsays.com. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next is another classic message from Yisrael Hawkins. From all of us here at YPN News, I'm Jeffrey Heimerman. And I'm Scott Alexander. Thanks for watching.